Welcome to my video, this is Ecogen. Shackled Isles is a limited time PvP event that was available on March 13th and ends April 10th. The ultimate goal is to be the last one standing. When the queue is available, you'll see an icon in the bottom right, just to the left of your received items icon. Click on it, choose the current window, and it automatically puts you in. You'll end up on a platform with everyone else, and the match starts once the lobby has 20 players. And once there are 20 players, it starts counting down from 30 seconds. After the timer, you're free to go anywhere you wish. Solo and dual queues are available for this event. Like other Battle Royale games, power-ups can be found in this one, and they often change the course of a fight. There are four category types of power-ups. Enchantments, Offense, Incantations, and Defense. Each of these categories have several power-ups within them with their own unique abilities. Now I won't go through each power-up, but I will list what they are and what they do in the video description. Now before you think this is only for whales, don't worry. It's gear equalized, so it comes down to your PvP skills and the usage of power-ups. Shackled Isles is only available during certain periods of the day and the window is one hour long. It's available starting at 1200, 1400, 1700, 2000, and 2300 server time. If you're unsure what time it starts for you, simply go to the top right hand corner, click on the time, and it will show you what time uh, Shackled Isles starts at. The power-up types are, are separated by color, so once you pick it up, it's automatically equipped into the slot. Pressing the corresponding number will use the power-up. In my experience, these power-ups can only be found where there are structures such as buildings and tents. power-ups can be stacked. So for example, in the defense category, you could have 10 health boost. However, the stack will disappear if you pick up the same power-up category, but a different effect. For instance, in slot 7, I had two of the cat paw power-ups, so the blue slot, and I picked up Gravity Surge, which is a blue power-up, and since it occupies the same spot, it replaced my previous power-ups. Ideally, you should stay with one effect per category so you can build up stacks of it. Each power-up has their own pros and cons, so it's up to you to decide what synergizes well with your playstyle. Always keep an eye on the spirit wall warning indicator so you don't get caught by the impending death zone. The indicator is under the minimap and the gauge slowly fills up as the timer goes to zero. The initial circle placement will be RNG and each circle after that will get smaller and smaller within the previous circle. The spirit wall won't instantly kill you, but it will chunk away at your health. As the game progresses into the later stages, the damage the spirit wall deals increases. Sprint stamina is unlimited in this event, however if you happen to find yourself within the spirit wall zone, you won't be able to run and you'll need to rely on movement skills, iframes, and defensive power-ups to quickly survive and get out of the safe zone, or get into the safe zone. Given the popularity of Battle Royale games, I was not surprised when Blaine Soul announced their own version of it. I am glad they equalized gear for this PvP event. That way it gives everyone a chance to try it out and have fun. 
The map, in my opinion, is a bit too large for 20 players. With the ability to wall dash, and since player names are disabled, people can easily hide in buildings, bushes, trees, or on top of uh, mountains, or anything else they can find. The white circle will indicate where the next safe zone will be established. In this fight, this is where I use the poison power up in, con in conjunction with my attacks. And then I oofed and SS'd off the mountain. And you'll see that in just a bit here. So there's the poison attack, and then I accidentally assessed. So I was like, shit. I was going to re engage, but I noticed the spirit wall was about to collapse, so the smarter play was to get into the safe zone. I decided not to pick up these power-ups as they would replace my 7 stack of health boosts. When you're entering the safe zone and the wall is collapsing behind you, I do recommend checking your back just to make sure there's no one behind you, you know, don't want any unwanted surprises. For enemies that you encounter that are on a higher elevation, you can pull them down with a certain blue power-up. So you see that happen here. When you defeat an enemy, they won't be dead just yet. You'll have to finish them off, otherwise they will be able to chi recover. and a random power-up will drop from your opponent once you kill them. In the late stages of the game, you are going to see a message pop up. The message monsters have appeared in Shackled Isles. We'll indicate that bosses will randomly spawn around the map. There are three types, and each type provides buff effects if you get the last hit. The bosses are strong, and they hit really hard. If you happen to kill one, and you have to get the finishing blow, by the way, like the last hit. It doesn't matter if you did the most amount of damage. If someone sneaks in and gets the last hit, they're going to get the kill count or kill credit. But anyway, if you do happen to get the last hit, this is the buff you'll get. Plus 50% AP, 25,000 health, and depending on which boss it was, it's either 6% health recovery every 2 seconds, 30% movement speed, or 2,000 defense. And then here you can see I'm, I'm trying to go after this assassin. Not having much luck. And it's it's moment like these that's perfect for a Benny Hill, you know, music insert. In Shackled Isles, you will meet various types of players. Some are passive and aim to survive as long as they can. 
while others are aggressive and go for kills. The rewards from Shackled Isles is based on two scoring systems. Your survival rank and how many opponents you defeated. Kills have a bigger influence on your rewards, so the event does encourage you to pick fights over hiding tactics. And of course, as the circle gets smaller and smaller, the situation will get much more intense because there's not as many places for people to hide, so it's going to force players to have to fight. Remember to always be aware of the circle, because when it closes in, it closes in fast. There's also another perk for killing the bosses. You gain the ability to transfer into, or not transfer, transform into Master Hong. The form is controlled as it sits in your number 5 slot, which allows you to transform whenever you want. The form lasts for 3 minutes and provides a big boost in health and defense. Master Hong's attacks are slow, but they're wide and they pack a punch. So let's go ahead and spectate this summoner fighting Master Hong because why not? Master Hong's abilities and skills are different from the input skills you see on your character. It's more like when you pick up a weapon and you have skills that are associated to that weapon. So the, the closest thing I can compare it to is like uh, when you pick up the horn and Beluga Lagoon. Alright, so now the Wall of Death is now closing in. And like I said, you always have to be aware of that. Because even if you're Master Hong, that shit hurts. Now the one unfortunate thing for this event is that kills are based on who gets the last hit. So even though I might have done the majority of the damage to that summoner, the destroyer got the last hit when they were in the uh, chi recovery form. So he got the kill.
when you're in a circle that this, that's this small, it's basically all about the power-ups. Especially the one power-up that can knock opponents back 60 meters. And in just a moment here, you'll actually see that happen to me. So the speed is going to come in, and then he's going to use that power up. It's going to knock me away 60 meters, and because this is the last zone, it's basically going to kill me without even a chance of getting back in. So alright, that's how uh, Shackled Isles works. I will include the main points and critical information in the video description. Unfortunately, this event is a limited time and ends on April 10th. Personally, I enjoy it and I hope it does make a comeback. And it should stay forever, really, because it's, it's a fun event. So let me know what your thoughts are on this event in the comments below. As always, my social links will be in the video description. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace out.